Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to your Lunch Break Live. My name is Ivana Karinkiu, if you're new here. And if you're not new here, thank you for coming back. Today is Thursday, November the 10th, and today I am joined by a scientist from UAB. This is Dr. Courtney Peterson. She's an associate professor in the UAB Department of Nutrition Sciences, and she's here today to explain a new study that UAB is embarking on, really interesting, about intermittent fasting and its effects on aging, and if intermittent fasting can actually make you younger. So Dr. Peterson is going to talk a little bit about that, the study, and answer some questions here. Now, Courtney, I know this is this is a lot of, it's a lot of words to get down to kind of what the heart of this study really is. And I have plenty of questions. I know that a lot of our viewers will too. So give me kind of the overview of what this study is. Sure, absolutely. I'll even start with what intermittent fasting is so everyone knows. So intermittent fasting is any sort of approach where you fast for at least 14 hours at a time and you repeat that some number of times per week or per month. And there are lots of different approaches that we think of as intermittent fasting. For instance, you could do a 24 hour water only fast one day a week. You could also, um, for instance, eat a very low calorie diet some number of times per week, like say one, eat one meal a day and technically you'd be extending your fast. And then more recently, we've been really excited about types of intermittent fasting where you eat in a shorter time period and extend your uh, daily fast. So for instance, eating in an eight hour time period and then fasting for 16 hours of the day. So you can do that either by eating breakfast later in the day and or dinner earlier in the day. And so we've been really excited because there's data from animals suggesting that when the animals do intermittent fasting, they actually live longer. And so we uh, got really excited about this and we are doing a study to see if we can actually extend uh, the or slow down the aging pro process in people and actually get them to live longer simply by doing intermittent fasting. And that is an incredible statement. It's incredible from those animal studies. You say that scientists found that animals who ate within that certain time window and fasted for a time window lived longer. That's incredible on a lot of levels. But also, I think this is probably appealing to people who hear and they say, well, I've tried calorie restriction. I've tried counting all of my calories. It is awful. It is painful. And it's time consuming and kind of depressing. So could intermittent fasting be a swap for the calorie restriction? Is that something that you're looking into as well? Absolutely. And so where this whole aging or anti-aging research started is we found out a couple decades ago that if you lose a lot of weight, it seems to slow the aging process and it helps animals live a lot longer. Uh, we tried doing clinical trials on people and we found out most people really struggle to lose weight. It's not fun to count calories. And even though it does seem to slow the aging process and make you younger, a lot of people can't stick with it in the long term. So fast forward today, there's been a lot of research on intermittent fasting. People are really excited about it because what we know about intermittent fasting is when you eat in this narrow time period each day, it actually naturally curbs your appetite. And so people kind of naturally eat less without even trying, without counting calories. So if we just tell you go eat in an eight hour period, a lot of people just naturally eat less. And so they lose weight and they find it way easier to do than, you know, step in on the scale or counting calories. And we find that part of the way it works is it naturally reduces your appetite. So when we go out and measure people's appetite hormones when they're doing intermittent fasting, we find that a lot of these appetite hormones are lower. So people have less of the hunger hormone ghrelin, and it just seems to make their hunger more even keeled throughout the day. And so there's been a lot of data suggesting that intermittent fasting may actually also slow the aging process. It seems to help people lose some extra weight, some extra pounds. So we've been really excited about that, way easier to do than calorie counting. It also seems to improve people's blood sugar control and also reduce their blood pressure. But what we don't know now is, can it actually slow the aging process in humans? And so we're actually doing a clinical study right now, and we're looking for people aged between the ages of 25 to 45 who are healthy to help us find out, like, can we actually slow the aging process in, in humans? If you do intermittent fasting, can it make you biologically younger? So most people have heard about chronological age, which is, you know, how old are you? How many birthdays do you have? But there's also something known as biological age, which is how young or how old does your body actually look and feel? And some people feel a lot younger than their age and some people feel a lot older than their age. So we're actually doing a study to see if we can kind of turn back the hands of time and can we make people biologically younger? So we'll be measuring people's biological age in a bunch of really, really cool ways. So one, we'll just look at your overall health. Like, are you healthier? Do you kind of have the health profile of someone who's younger? 
The second thing we'll look at is we'll look at people's DNA to see if their DNA looks younger. So there's something called um, epigenetic age, um, which has to do with um, little markers on your DNA that are increased as you age. And we're trying to see, well, do some of those markers decrease, indicating that you're actually becoming biologically younger? And then we'll look at a bunch of other really cool things, like do you have more stem cells in your body? How about the level of sort of molecular damage throughout the body? Can we reduce that? Can we rejuvenate the body? Can we make you leaner? So reduce your body fat while also helping you keep all your muscle mass. So we're going to look at a, a bunch of things across the whole health spectrum. I don't know anybody who probably wouldn't want to be leaner. Um, I will. <laughs> I think that we can all agree to that one. I know I can. Uh, Courtney, now there's a lot of things I want to ask here because you just opened up a huge can of worms. And it's also interesting. And it's really looking like this study is to look at, it, it is to look at aging about the biologically, uh, and if you are biologically younger through intermittent fasting, but it looks like you're looking at a lot of things with intermittent fasting and a lot of positive, potentially positive health benefits there. Yeah, that's right. So we'll be measuring people's blood sugar control. We'll also measure their blood pressure, their cholesterol levels. We'll also see, does it help you lose weight? Like it seems to in other studies and how much weight do people lose? So we're doing this study for six months. And we're thinking that people may lose up to 10% of their body weight. And our, our goal is to see, like, does it actually help people lose weight? And then we'll also look, I mentioned earlier, we'll look at people's muscle mass and the amount of bone mass. So we do these really cool scans so we can tell you how much muscle mass you have in your body and how much body fat you have. And then we'll measure your metabolic rate. So how many calories that you, do you burn? And we're trying to see, does that help you kind of maintain your metabolism too? as you age. And then we're looking at a bunch of different aspects of aging, kind of molecular aspects in the body. So we'll look at some anti-aging processes in the body. We'll also measure a, a rejuvenative process known as autophagy. So autophagy is just a fancy word for kind of cellular recycling. So when your proteins um, in your cells get worn out, your body says, oh, okay, we need to recycle them and kind of rejuvenate them. So there's some really, really cool data, um, both from my lab and from other studies, uh, studies in other labs suggesting that intermittent fasting actually increases autophagy. So it increases this rejuvenation process where your body kind of recycles and it and repairs these worn out tissues. Um, and so we'll be looking at a bunch of things across the spectrum um, and we're really excited to, to find out the answer. I have a couple more questions for you, but a quick question we got is, uh, where do I sign up? So I'm going to go ahead and give you this phone number and uh, I'll put it in the comments when we finish here, but it's 205. 934-1457. You can also go online at pbrc.edu slash dial health UAB, all one word. I'll put this in the comments too when we finish. So don't be like you have to, to write that down, but just if anybody is just super anxious. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about enrolling in the study in a second here. But I want to ask you one thing, Courtney, and that is about the holidays coming up. Now, I know even people who do try to count their calories, who do try to go into calorie restriction, the holidays are a tough time a lot of uh, often for those people, for anybody trying to do that. There are holiday get togethers. There are the, uh, all of the meals, which always somehow center on meals, right? Our favorite thing to do, I think, yeah, is people, uh, the food, the drinks, the candy, everything. And I know that's something, uh, a time of the year that a lot of people can struggle with, especially if they do not have a good relationship with food. So tell me a little bit about this study. Is this something that could help people who maybe have a little bit of hesitation about going into the holiday? season and keeping their weight stable? Absolutely. And we find average weight gain over the holidays is a few pounds. A lot of it's just over social activities and it's kind of hard to stay on track through the holidays. One really cool thing we do in this study is we know that when people, you know, have an accountability partner or they step on the scale, most people don't enjoy stepping on the scale, but either of those two, they tend to do better. And so one of the things we do in this study is we provide health coaching. So if you enroll in the study, you will um, you'll be uh, at random, be either in the intermittent fasting group or you'll be in the weight loss group, or there's a small chance you might be in, the, in neither of those two groups, but you'll get a health coach. Um, and that health coach will meet with you um, either weekly or every two weeks to help you stick with the goals of the study. So this is kind of your cheerleader, your person to kind of cheer you through the holidays and um, keep you on track. But yes, we find this time of the year weight seems to creep up in almost everyone. So biggest thing is to just get back into the groove in the new year and have really good uh, habits. 
I think that, again, everybody can agree this time of the year is is one that is not as much fun if you are trying to to watch everything. I know some people have to do that. Um, interesting comment here from David. I'd love to know your thoughts on this, Courtney. He says, uh, so glad you're doing the study. He said, I've been on 18 to 6 intermittent fasting for over a year. It's greatly helped me in getting off some di diabetes medication and getting rid of um, some other health problems. He said, best of luck with your study. Uh, have you heard that from people who have been involved with intermittent fasting as you started the study and started publicizing it? Absolutely. We found some people have been able to take fewer medications, particularly blood sugar lowering medications, though we always tell people to work with your doctor because we want you to stay safe. And if you do the intermittent fasting and lose a lot of weight or get other benefits, um, we don't want that blood sugar medication to bring you in a state where your blood sugar is too low, which could be a problem. We also find I've gotten a lot of people say that I lost a lot of weight. I no longer need my blood pressure medications. Um, so we've also seen some pretty impressive effects for lowering blood pressure. So absolutely. And we just encourage people to work with your doctor just to make sure that you stay safe as, as your health improves. Another question here from Pamela, she asks about a study for older participants. I know that you said this study is limited to people ages 25 to 45. Any plans for something of people above that age and kind of jumping off of that? What do you think about intermittent fasting for people above that age? Yeah. So there've been a couple studies in, in people who are sort of on the older uh, end of the spectrum. So above 45, and it seems that intermittent fasting has all the same benefits. We aren't currently doing a study um, in that age group, but there's another team at Wake Forest that is, and um, they are doing intermittent fasting in elderly uh, uh, people, and they're trying to see, can it reduce some of those diseases that you actually get with the aging process? So they're actually going to look at, you know, can we prevent diseases? Um, so very exciting work. And that sounds like it's probably for um, much older than that, that 45 group. Uh, so it seems like it's kind of on both spectrums here. Yes, like more like 60 to 80 year old age range. Mm -hmm. Very, very interesting. Now tell me when this study kind of wraps up, will you be publishing the results? Will people get to know, hey, did this work? Did this not work? What was the benefit? Yeah, absolutely. So we'll be publishing the results and then we plan to do a large nationwide study. So the National Institutes of Health has signaled they want to fund a very large study and hundreds of people to see do maybe a five year study to see if we can slow the aging process across five years. So we're super excited about this. This is the first phase. And what we're really trying to see in this phase is can people stick with the intermittent fasting? And how does it compare to just standard calorie counting? We suspect it's better, but we don't know for certain. And it's still possible that counting calories, you may lose more weight. Maybe you maybe or but maybe you lose more weight, but it's still harder to do. And therefore, more people still prefer the intermittent fasting. So we don't know, um, but we're really excited to find out. It's a six month long study and we're looking for people who are generally healthy. So either normal weight or slightly overweight um, who are on either no medications or close to no medications and who would be committed to turning around uh, their health. And we pay $850 if you complete the whole study. So if you're looking for a big, you know, for a lifestyle change to get healthy, this is a great study. Um, and we are there to support you every, every part of the way. I'm going to leave the, the details here, but this is one of my favorite things in looking at this study. Um, you said that those selected um, will, again, intermittent, will be in the intermittent fasting, likely fasting for 16 hours per day. And in that fasting for 16 hours a day, that means that they would probably eat dinner by 6 p.m. So again, that's shortening the amount of time per day that you eat. And I have to say, I saw that. And it made me very happy because I will, I know, I'm not even going to say friends. I know people that will say, oh, let's go to dinner at 730. Let's go to dinner at eight. And that is, if you, if anybody knows me, they know that that is not, that's not my style. We're eating early. I'm going to bed early. So the eating dinner by 6 p.m. was one of my favorite things there. And it also, according to all these details from the study, you get a break day per week. So it sounds like you get a little bit of a cheat in there as well. Correct. Correct. And we wanted to make sure it's doable for people, right? No one wants to stick to any concrete plan every day of the week for the rest of their life. Everyone wants a break. And so we, regardless of what group you're in, you get one break day a week to do whatever you want. And we want to make sure everyone can still hang out with their friends and so forth. But we do ask that you stick with the plan six days a week. Now, again, if you want to enroll, I'll put this in the comments, but the phone number is 205-934-1450. 57. Again, that's 
five seven, or you can do it online at pbrc.edu dash dial d i a l health u a b all one word. Again, we're going to leave this in the comments. So you don't have to write that down. Um, but I know there's a lot of people here who are interested. Courtney, I'm sure you've gotten a lot of outreach as well from other people, and you were selecting about fifty people as well for the study. Is that right? That's correct. We're looking for people for the next year. So if now's not a good time, feel free to reach out to us in the future. We'll, we'll still be here for another year looking for people. I know that we're going to have to have you back to talk about the result of this study, because I think so many people are interested here and, and want to know how this turns out. So good luck to you in this study. And again, we can't wait to get an update from you. Great. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Courtney, again. Everybody, I'll leave that information here if you're interested in the study. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Have a wonderful day and we'll see you next time.